Hi, my name is Soph and here are all the key things that you need to know about applying to Oxbridge. So the first thing is that you absolutely must love your subject. There is no point in applying if you do not love your subject. So you have to make sure that the course actually suits you as well and that you aren't just applying because it's Oxbridge because so many people do that and the process is so draining and you don't want to unnecessarily put yourself through that. Um, the next thing is that you need to have your personal statement done earlier, checked and basically your whole UCAS form ready, ideally by the 1st of October. Get as many people as possible to read over your personal statement. Um, the official deadline is the 15th of October, but there's a slight delay in like getting your references in, so you want to be ready about two weeks before that. Um, on the note of references, be nice to your teachers so that they give you a good reference. Um, and then about your personal statement, don't write anything cliche in your personal statement, especially books that everyone's read. So I know for physics, if they see you write about um, a brief history of time, they hate it because they're like, yeah, well, everyone's read that. So why are you telling me about it? Try and find something a bit more individual to read. Um, and also that'll make you just stand out a bit more. Um, fill your personal statement with super curriculars. So these are things that you've done outside of your lessons which still relate to the subject you want to study and the summer uh, particularly of year 12 is a brilliant opportunity to get loads of these done so things like summer schools work experience but equally there's loads of things that you can do at home from reading to if you're applying for physics Isaac physics is a great resource there are loads of things that you can be doing um, but equally, don't forget your extracurriculars. Now, Oxbridge say they're not bothered about them, as in they don't really care if you are a like national gymnast or if you just play netball for your local team. Like They really don't care, but equally, they do expect to see it. So if you don't include anything, they're going to be a bit weirded out. So as much as they're not bothered, they kind of are. So most people just put like a sentence or two at the end of their personal statement just being like, oh yeah, and I did gold DV and I can play the piano. You also need to make sure that you have entered for your entrance exam. So most courses do now have an entrance exam since ASs have been abolished. Even if you have done your ASs, you do still need to take the entrance exam and you have to make sure that you've entered for that by the 15th of October. Um, also, you probably need to do some revision for it, particularly for Oxford, as they tend to place more weight on the entrance exam. But at the same time, it is only one part of your application, so don't get too stressed out about it. So yeah, know that the process can be really draining and basically just be prepared for that because uh, it is quite a lot more work than applying to other universities, which is why you have to really love your course. Otherwise, you're just unnecessarily putting yourself through that. So for most courses, on average, there are about five applicants per place. But I also spoke to an admissions tutor at one of the colleges and he said that um, of those five applicants that they get per place, two of them will actually be good enough. So basically, for every person that gets in, there is another person who is basically just as good, but they don't have space for. So, yeah it's 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 really tough um but equally like if you love your subject you should absolutely just give it a go because you never know you might get in someone has to get in um whilst you're doing all of this you have to make sure that you keep up to date with your a-level content because there is no point putting your heart and soul into this application and then if you don't get a place then basically you're now in a really pants position because all your A-level content has fallen behind. But even if you then do get a place, you've then got to meet your offer. And if you've let all of your A-level stuff slide, it's going to be really hard to pick that back up again. So just make sure that you keep on top of it. I mean, I did slip ever so slightly, but I was able to get straight back on top of it. And my teachers were understanding. They were like, yeah, OK, you didn't do quite as well as you usually would have. But I understand that you've got your entrance exam in like a week's time. So as long as after that you bring it back up, fine. And then I did bring it back up. So it was completely fine. Um, I mean, I found this more the case at summer schools and masterclasses that I went to. But there was the odd person at interview um, who would try and like psych you out. 
So they would be like showing off how many nines they got at GCSE and all this extra stuff that they'd done. And honestly, nine times out of 10, they're just really nervous and trying to overcompensate. Like it really doesn't mean anything. And the worst thing that you can possibly do is see these people and be like, ah, I haven't done all this stuff and therefore they're not going to want me. It's not true. They're looking for potential. Like you could have done everything in the world but if they don't think you've got potential and the environment is right for you, they're not going to take you. So it really doesn't matter. And actually, often those people that try and psych you out don't even get in anyway. So um, more about the interviews. They aren't trying to trick you. When you hear all of these crazy things that get published in the newspapers, like this is what Oxbridge students have been asked at an interview. Those questions are taken massively out of context. They're not going to just ask you a really random question out of the blue like you can't answer so just try and breathe um and be friendly because these are the people that could well be teaching you so you know you want them to like you um but equally they are more bothered about what's in your brain than anything else um in terms of practice so I applied for physical natural sciences and Isaac physics is great for questions because they are very the interview questions are very centred around what you've done at school and basically Isaac Physics is like designed as an extension programme so honestly it's brilliant, go check it out. Um, and then I thought I would just talk through some of the differences between Oxford and Cambridge. So obviously the first thing you want to look at is the course and whether or not one of them suits you more than the other but sometimes they're incredibly similar or you like them just the same so here are some pros and cons of each. So let's start with Oxford. Generally, Oxford's offers are lower. Um, so you're less likely to get an offer and then miss your offer. Um, it's also more of a city-like feel. Um, and specifically with the sciences, it offers them as three separate sciences. Although they also do have materials and the more niche ones. Whereas... At Cambridge, it's all taught as natural sciences, so you have to do a couple of sciences in your first year, and then after that, you can basically just specialise in one. Whereas at Oxford, they just start with separate sciences from the start. Personally, I think Oxford is slightly more traditional. For example, you have to wear gowns to your exams, and if you don't have like the right thing on, they won't let you in. So. It depends whether or not you like that. Um, they do also have a lower state school acceptance rate. So if that bothers you, then maybe something to consider. And lastly, they have more colleges. I mean, it's only a couple more, but still, they have a couple more colleges, including some that only offer certain subjects, as some might only offer humanities subjects. Um, meanwhile, at Cambridge, they are, I think, less bothered by your GCSEs and they tend to take your application as a whole and like a more overview of you as a person rather than taking like one specific thing and being like, we well, didn't do well in that, so you're out. Um, they generally are less focused on the entrance exam. So if you do badly in your entrance exam, which believe me, I did, it is not game over. Like there are other things that can pull you back up. But I know if you apply for physics at Oxford, if you do badly in your entrance exam, it's very unlikely that you'll get an interview. So if you think that's a risk, then maybe that's a reason to apply to Cambridge. Um, at Cambridge, you will almost certainly only be interviewed at one college and that'll be the college that you apply to. Even if you were to then end up at a different college, most of the time you don't get re-interviewed, whereas at Oxford you get sent to all different colleges. Um, Cambridge is more like a town and it's a lot smaller than Oxford so maybe if you're not from a big city that might suit you better. Um, the natural sciences course is a lot broader than Oxford's and in terms of depth you, if you were to do natural sciences and specialise in physics which is what I'm hoping to do you would come out with the same amount of depth as someone who'd gone to Oxford and done straight physics but you will have done say a bit of extra chemistry and materials on the side so if that appeals to you, then maybe that's a reason to pick Cambridge. But then again, that does mean that you then have to do more work because you've got to find a way of doing all of the content for physics and then this extra content. 
so I think it probably means that the workload will be slightly higher. Um, if you are looking at maths or maths with physics, so that's another route into physics at Cambridge, know that STEP is really hard and they give out twice the number of offers as they have places knowing that about half of people will miss their offer based on their step grade so that's quite uncertain if you have an offer you're like oh well I've got a 50 50 chance of making it so if that doesn't sound like something you're willing to do then maybe don't apply to Cambridge for maths or maths with physics um if you are a girl at Cambridge you have the opportunity to apply to a girls only college um personally that's not something that I would have wanted to do and I didn't apply to a girls college but um a lot of people do really like girls colleges and I know people that have been and who have absolutely loved it personally it's not for me but there's an option and also unlike Oxford nearly all colleges offer nearly all subjects whereas at Oxford it's much more only certain colleges are in, offer certain subjects. So you'll find for most colleges, it will say we offer all subjects except maybe like one subject. Um, so generally you get a much broader cohort, whereas at Oxford you might be in a college that does just sciences or just humanities, whereas at Cambridge you'll have a little mix of everyone. So if you want to get to know different people rather than just the people that are on your course or similar courses, then either apply to a college that does basically all subjects or apply to Cambridge. Um, so hopefully that gave you a rundown of just the key things that you need to know um, in a nutshell before applying to Oxbridge. Um, thank you for watching.